Get Up Nation. My name is Ben Biddick. I am the creator and host of the Get Up Nation podcast, where I serve individuals, organizations, and societies to develop and sustain resilience and perseverance. I'm the co-author of Get Up, The Art of Perseverance with former Major League Baseball player Adam Greenberg. The Get Up Nation podcast is brought to you in partnership with GotYour6Coffee.com, where Navy veteran Eric Hadley is committed to serving first responders, veterans, and their families through a variety of nonprofit organizations. No stranger to adversity, Eric has fused the necessity of coffee with his passion for public service. You're already purchasing coffee. Why not empower your coffee with purpose? Why not purchase coffee that not only has your six, but also has the backs of those who don a uniform of service for our communities and great country. Learn more about Eric and his freshly roasted, award-winning coffee at GotYourSixCoffee.com. Recently, I had the honor and privilege of speaking with William Hong. William is a Hong Kong-born American motivational speaker and former singer who gained fame in early 2004 as a result of his audition performance of Ricky Martin's song, She Bangs, on the third season of the television series, American Idol. Hung subsequently appeared on several television programs, including Jimmy Kimmel Live, On Air with Ryan Seacrest, Entertainment Tonight, George Lopez, Late Show with David Letterman, the list goes on and on. Hung was featured in several national magazines and newspapers, parodied on Saturday Night Live and also Mad TV, and even appeared on Celebrity Deathmatch. Today, he shares with Get Up Nation his new book called Champion by Choice and his journey of resilience. Such a pleasure to welcome William, William Hong to Get Up Nation. William, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Um, today, let's get started with where you currently live. Where, where is your home base today? Um, I live in Los Angeles at the moment. All right. All right. And I love your book. I, uh, I love what you're doing today and the example that you are for people to be brave enough to pursue their dreams. Let's, uh, here's a copy of the book here. And uh, I just want people to know that there's a link below. Feel free to check out that link and go buy a copy of it today for you and your friends if you want to learn how to become a champion in your life. Uh, William, let's talk about the concept of failure. You challenge people to embrace our failure, and by doing so, we, quote, disarm them of their power over us. Will you go into this concept and share how powerful it is to change our mindset when it comes to failure? Yeah, absolutely. Um, When I uh, first auditioned for American Idol back in 2004, um, I went into uh, the audition thinking that I'm probably not going to make it to Hollywood because there's over 100,000 people auditioning every single year. Um, So my odds were very slim. Uh, And that's why I was able to maintain the positive mindset, even uh, uh, despite uh, Simon's harsh words, (laughs) you can't sing, you can't dance. So what do you want me to say? (laughs) And I think it's the same thing in life because, um, because I noticed that like everyone should have a right to try something new without being judged or ridiculed. Right. Absolutely. That's so great. And it's brave to do that. It's a, it's a sign of bravery and, and um, you know, the world can be a vicious place. So, but, and, and you initially experienced some embarrassment about this audition, but then you began to realize something. You began to realize that you had fans and how did this change your perspective on what happened? I didn't expect to get fans overnight right after my American Idol audition, but I would say that's what keeps me going. That's what uh, gives me the courage to entertain and bring happiness to the to the world, even though I might not have the the, the best talent. Uh, what I said on American Idol audition, how I had no professional training. It was true for a long time until, until like my record company um, finished recording the first album, Inspiration. That's when they uh, invested in giving me vocal coaches and dancing, dancing uh, teachers. But, even, <laughs> but before that, I, I didn't have any professional training. And, may, and maybe that's the essence of entertainment. Maybe it doesn't matter if you are the best uh, um, singer or dancer based on the, the, the society standards. Maybe it's more like, you know, how, how, how you can uh, relieve people's stress and uh, bring some positive vibes to the world. Absolutely. Yeah. And there is a lot of negativity out there. You write about the experience of being bullied in school um, and then, it, it, you know, you were kind of bullied on the show. So it's like, uh, will you share how your experiences around bullying when you were younger, how it led to a decreased ability to trust others? 
uh, at, at initially, but then it became something you use, you develop skills and talents for overcoming uh, the, you know, you developed coping skills to overcome the challenges associated with bullying. And now you're thriving after, you know, having a, an experience of being bullied on national television. Yeah, I, I would say that, that after the bullying experience in school, I had a hard time trusting uh, most people around me. Uh, that's why my best friends, I thought, were, were teachers uh, in high school because they, they, had a, they were more mature. They were, they, they were more empathetic about, about, about my life and where I want to go. Mm. But over time, I realized that, that you know, there are people that I can attract and connect that, that believes uh, the similar values and has similar visions that, like, like I do. Yeah. Yeah. And so in those, in those earlier experiences, you know, in high school, what were some of the skills that you learned to help you, you know, navigate those negative experiences? Um, I would say the, uh, one of the biggest lessons I learned is, um, is how you see yourself and, and the vision that you want to create, create in your life. Obviously, I didn't know about this as a 20-year-old college kid. It took me uh, six, 16 years of, of uh, finding myself in order to get to where I am today. Uh, and, and, that, and that's why I really want to share, um, share what I learned in my book, Champion by Choice. Yeah. Uh, it's because the book was published last year. It's fairly recent. Uh, it's not like 2004, many, many years ago. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's, it's all the, the, of the experience I learned and I want to share it with the world. Ex- excellent. Yeah, and uh, let's see. One of the chapters that I like the most is the one called Your Stories Are Valuable. You describe the world as being full mm-hmm. of people mm-hmm. hungering for insight. People want to hear about the lessons yes. you learned. They want to be able to navigate the challenges in their lives, right? And so it takes bravery to yes. share our journey, to connect in that way. Um, how free mm-hmm. is it for you to share your journey in this book, to provide your insights, and to empower others to move forward in the pursuit of their dreams, even if when they do, it isn't necessarily a smooth ride? Um, I would say that, 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 that sharing, sharing your stories, it, I mean, it depends on what kind of stories you're sharing, but the, the kind of stories I'm, I, I'm referring to in my book are the stories where there's a lot of pain in the past. There's, you, you know, when you share the, 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 the pains and the failures, like, like some you mentioned earlier in the, in the um, interview, it can be difficult. It's not some. It's not easy to share about my, you know, former uh, divorces or uh, former uh, failures that you know, like my, my my ventures don't work out the way that I wanted to. Things like that, or not even not not finding the right passion, being stuck at a cubicle job for a long time. You know, not having any meaning in life. Sure. Those are hard, hard stories for to to share uh, with the world because because in a way you are admitting that that you have flaws in your life and but but it's okay. Recently, I actually um, share about a recent a, a new story about how some of my friends, um, you know, close friends, perceived me to be self somewhat selfish. You know, I'm good at math. I'm very good at calculating, but then I only calculate my, my, my bottom line instead of everybody else. Mm-hmm. And, and, it's, and it's hard to, to, to hear that. It's hard to, to share that, right? Like with you, you know, but I learned something. And what I learned is that, hey, may, 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 maybe uh, I need to think about my overall purpose in my life and, and, go, uh, and go for a mission that's beyond myself. Well, that's amazing. And that's great. And uh, that, that speaks to these noble concepts. You know, you, you speak to the noble uh, concepts of being authentic, of getting out there, of being courageous, uh, of putting in the work, of, you know, make it, putting yourself out there, even if it's, even if you embarrass yourself, you know, even if, even you still learn from those lessons. And if mm-hmm. you allow yourself to be humble enough to learn those lessons, it makes you better. It makes you more connected, yes. more self-aware, and it makes you more able to connect with others. So for you to share this and yeah. share your lessons with others and be brave enough to keep going, to be brave enough to keep learning, yes. is a very noble uh, uh, thing. And so I, I wanted to talk a little bit about that sense of risk. So in the book, you, you talk about this as well. Um, yes. What do we need to understand about taking these kinds of risks that, that may level our ego for a moment? Hmm. I, I, well, I, I would say that, that, that I, like, I finally realized after, after all these years that you have a choice. 
Do you want to live、uh, an ego-centric life or a vision-centric life?、Nice. Uh, because, because, because you know, when you uh, uh, get trapped in the ego-centric life,、uh, that like that, that, that's that's how, that's how、um, that's how you feel like. Oh my gosh,、uh, what is this? What am I doing?、Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's I, I mentioned in the book about poker. You know, using using the experience I learned from poker and how, and how to apply it in your life. And unfortunately, you know,、uh, I mean, I'm not. I don't regret my decision to to learn and play poker. I think poker taught me a lot of a, a lot about managing life, my business, and everything else. But poker is a zero sum game. Poker it means that that you have you have to beat other people. You have to take their money. You know, it's, it's like so. So yeah, it's 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 like it's like wait a minute. You know, this doesn't that. Uh, this doesn't align with what the life that I want to create. You know, it, it's I don't I don't I feel like you know in, in the game it's fine like it's a hobby for fun whatever. But but in the long term it's like I don't want to go just beat down other people to lift myself up. Right, right, and so that's that that largely then brings us to this book. I mean, you're helping people choose to to be champions in a way where where you're helping people better themselves. You're helping people empower themselves in that grand vision. Tell me about your vision. What you know? Where do you see as you as you you know create this vision for your life? What what do you see as your legacy? What do you see as you know your future ahead of you in, in the investments that you're making in people?、Uh, what's your vision? Um, right now, my 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 newest vision is to empower more unsung heroes and new performers, so that they can succeed and thrive at what they love. And the reason I chose this vision is because、um, I I remember、um, b- uh, back in 16 years ago, the, the there were some two people I would say two people that gave me that chance. One of them is a former producer, Megan Wolflick. You know, she loved me. Otherwise, she wouldn't let me go through the preliminary rounds,、mm-hmm. and and then also I've、um, you know another person、um, I I forgot like like I think it's one of the another、uh, one of the producers,、um, uh, uh, but but anyway there are some people that 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 needs to give you that chance, and it and、uh, it's like it's like it's a combination of luck and opportunity. You know、mm-hmm. I was at the right place at the right time, but but someone has to give you that chance, and I feel like now. I'm in a position where I want to give more people that chance. That's excellent. That's excellent.、And、so, what is your word of advice、uh, to the young person who is, you know, they have their skills, they have their talents, they have their passions. They they are, you know, they're young, so their life is ahead of them. They're not sure of how, maybe how to pursue it. They may not be sure of of asserting themselves, especially in a public way. What is some of your、mm-hmm. your、uh, recommendations or advice for young people who are toying with the idea? Of putting themselves out there and taking that risk. Well,、um, one one question that that has helped me to、uh, to to take more smart, calculated risks. You know, I'm not saying you know take take reckless risks, right? You don't want to just suddenly quit your job tomorrow, do、right. drugs, or, or do something bad to yourself. You know,、right. that's not a good risk to take.、Right. But 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 other than that, in terms of like you know, maybe starting a new business. Uh, trying something new, put it, putting it out there in the universe. I would say, like, like the question I always ask myself is, what's the worst thing that can happen to me?、Yeah. And and if the and if the answer is not that bad, then then let's let's do it. You know, for my American Idol audition, the worst thing that can happen to me is I go back to be a normal student, and 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 then and then nothing else happens. Actually, it's actually more than that because now I realize that after they broadcast it on TV, the worst thing that can happen is you know people gotta get a good laugh,、uh, like like many people did <laughs> from my audition, <laughs> and 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 then it's okay. And I acknowledge, I tell people, hey, you know, sometimes you just gotta try and see what happens. Like I didn't go into the audition thinking, oh wow, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get so freaking famous. I'm gonna get like like number one independent album on billboards. Like none of that's,、uh, you know, that's not that, that's not that's not why I thought, you know. Sure. Yeah, and I mean, you're just being, you were being authentic, right? You're just doing something that you were taking a shot at something. You were, you were, it was a song you loved, right? I mean, and and when yeah. I, when I think of all the news, you know, that's coming out, a lot of it is so negative, right? And so there isn't a lot of authenticity out there.、Uh, people are trying so、yeah. hard to be super cool or the richest or、yes. the the most amazing, but、uh, right. We, We miss something with that, right? We 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 get a message that we have to be perfect before we put ourselves out there, or something. That's that. right. 
That's and it right. doesn't it doesn't bring us together. Like you're talking about is is creating this environment where you're helping people get to the, put themselves out there, helping yeah. an environment where they're able to learn lessons in a healthy way. Um, that's fruitful. That creates unity. That creates engagement. That that creates yes. you know that creates stars who have a level of humility and authenticity. Tell mm-hmm. me more about what you're creating here and how more humane it is than some of our, our systems currently. Well, um, I, um, I, I'm a big believer in, in, uh, in terms of like sustainable giving. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's another, that's another um, uh, principle that I learned recently in my life. Like, of course, we want to give as much as possible, but we don't want to do it to a point where we are sacrificing the quality of life um, for, for, our, for, for, your, for yourself and your loved ones. And we also don't want to compromise our values. That's, what it, that's another very, very important factor. Like, for example, like, like if someone was to pay me a lot of money to record negative uh, comments or profanity, it's something I would turn down because it's against my values. Excellent. Excellent. Um, and, and this kind of brings like one, one thing that we frequently talk about on, on, you know, the, on my show about resilience is, is those painful experiences that happen often create, if we look for the opportunity within those painful experiences, we find a huge opportunities there and it helps us grow. It helps us connect with others in new ways that we may have never envisioned uh, or, or, or planned on. So take us to that moment where you're on stage with Ricky Martin. I mean, you, you had taken a shot, you had gone out there and then you're on stage with Ricky Martin, right? And so you've been yes. through all experiences and now here you are today and still inspiring people. So what do you think of as you look back and as you look forward? Wow, um, I, I would say like 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 uh, find, being able to finally perform with Ricky Martin is like the, the pinnacle of, of, of one of my pinnacles of my life. I'm sure there'll be more, <laughs> no, but but I think it's definitely what, like a climax. You know, it, it's like wow, <laughs> I finally made my made it. I finally made my dream come true. And it, it has nothing to do with, you know, the amount of money I make uh, from that, right? It's more like, it's more like that was my dream um, all along when I first listened to him singing She Bangs mm-hmm. uh, 16 years ago. <laughs> like, like I had that vision, like, wow, this guy was so cool with the standing microphone doing this movements on, on, the, on the live stages around the world that time. Uh, and then, and then I, the, the fact that I get to do it with him Oh my gosh! You know, it felt, it's still so surreal. With uh, like, I will never forget that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, so tell me more about you know the lessons that you've learned along the way, some of the challenges that you experienced. What is one thing you that surprised you? Uh, what positive thing was surprising for you as you went through this this surreal experience? Ooh. Um, I would say one of the most surprising um, uh, things uh, from from my uh, American Idol audition and the whole entertainment career uh, is the is the diverse uh, uh, fan base that I have, and and then like how uh, how some uh, middle aged woman back uh, back in the old days would <laughs> with would, would, uh, would post this signs uh, like "Will you marry me?" and then I don't <laughs> even know who you are, you know, <laughs> and then how. And I couldn't say yes to that because I was this trendy some year old college kid, and then and and then the the, the some of the, the the craziest fans were like like forties to fifties, you know, like like, yeah. uh, like 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 ladies, you know. Yeah. So yeah, it's crazy <laughs> to think yeah. to think about that. And, and and but then the other the other the other interesting like like, like experiences I remember is like you know there there's like these um, kids uh, with, with that's that's going with their parents or the or their grandparents. They will line up and and uh, before the pandemic uh, to to get autographs and pictures. It's like wow, <laughs> wow. It's like it's like everybody, right? From young to 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 old to uh, all ethnicities, all races, all religions. It's like wow. I can't believe that I could connect pe- with so many people like that. That is truly amazing. That is fantastic. William, I always end the show with six questions to help my listeners understand the why within my phenomenal guests. Will you run through these six quick questions with me? Yeah, of course. Right. Who are you thankful for today? 
I'm thankful for one of my dear friends and mentors, Jacqueline Peterson from Joyful Living Mindset. Um, a lot of the, uh, the lessons I share today, I learned from her. Excellent. And now that we've covered who you're thankful for today, what are you thankful for today? I am thankful for all the friends, um, uh, families, uh, and mentors that I have to keep my vision going. Sure. And how do you fuel the fire within you? How do I fuel the fire within me? Um, I, I, I would say to, to, to always stay aligned with my mission to help more people beyond myself. Nice. And what is one thing adversity taught you to value? Um, de- definitely um, value, uh, value trying something new and not give up easily. Nice, nice. What are you doing today you may have never thought you could? Ooh, I am actually doing live streaming uh, and, and video shout outs for people uh, to keep uh, inspiring people. Uh, before the pandemic, there is no way I could predict that. Wow, excellent. And then what will you do tomorrow that you may have never thought you could? <laughs> oh, um, I'm tomorrow is actually Halloween as of this recording. Um, so I, I might go, uh, go check out my local stores and see if I could dress up like Confucius. <laughs> awesome. All right. How can people learn more about you and your amazing work? Um, go to my Instagram, williamhung.co. Uh, so that's williamhung.co, um, co, uh, all in, in, in one, one, uh, one sentence, one line, no, no spaces. Excellent. All right, everybody, go out there, get a copy of his book, Champion by Choice. Thank you so much for sending me a copy, William. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. Keep doing amazing things. And if there's anything you want to promote in the future, you'll always have a spot back here at Get Up Nation. Thank you for inspiring us all to get up when life knocks us down. 